Uh, and with that, we're very lucky to have with us Nina Roth, who uh, is a Hit Lab alum and now at Ellipsis Healthcare, that juggernaut in digital health that is uh, absolutely growing like gangbusters. And uh, she'll be interviewing uh, a CEO uh, from another uh, digital health uh, juggernaut, uh, Metagram. Uh, hi, Nina. How are you? I'm doing so well, Stan. Thanks for having me here. How are you? I am good. Turning the virtual uh, podium over to you. Perfect. All Hi. right. So thanks, Stan and the HitLab team, as well as Susan Zielinski for inviting me here. I'm very excited to, to be here. So I'll kick things off with introductions. My name is Nina Roth. I'm a client services manager at Ellipsis Health, where we've developed the only clinically validated vital sign for mental health. And we do this by harnessing the unique power of voice as a biomarker for mental health. And we use machine learning algorithms that identify, measure, and monitor the severity of stress, anxiety, and depression at scale. And as Stan mentioned, HitLab is really near and dear to my heart uh, because prior to Ellipsis Health, I was the lead coordinator of the Women's Health Tech Initiative here at HitLab. And we aim to improve women's health by enabling leaders from really all around the world to scale their healthcare innovations through content, connectivity, and capital. And I'd recommend checking out their weekly series. They're on Wednesdays. So without further ado, I'm so thrilled to introduce our amazing panelist, Sherry Duville. Sherry is the CEO and board member at Metagram, the mobile medicine company. She's also an editor, best-selling author, and sought-after speaker for healthcare IT's multi-sector roundtables and conferences such as Vive. She's the co-author of multiple books and several articles and technical papers, including Mobile Medicine, Overcoming People, Culture, and Governance. She's the co-chair of the IEEE International Joint Venture for the Technical Trust Standard Project for Clinical IoT and Medicine. She also advises and serves startups, boards, and organizations, including as an advisor and lecturer for Santa Clara University's Corporate Board Readiness Programs. And on a more personal note, before meeting Sherry here, I've been lucky enough to benefit from some of her weekly newsletters where she serves up pandemic risk management strategies and at Ellipsis Health, we pass these emails around the office and we are especially grateful for them during Omicron. So hi, Sherry, it's, we're so lucky to have you here. Hi, Nina, thank you so much for such a kind introduction and, and just a fantastic job you've done on preparing for this. Very, very impressive. Uh, so I think uh, what you wanted me to do was talk about what we discussed at Vive. Is that correct? Sure. Yeah. So you recently were at Vive on a panel called 50 Shades of Cybersecurity in a Digital Health World. And I'd just love to hear a little bit more about what was discussed there and what were some highlights from the panel? Yeah, thank you. It was such an honor. I got to speak with three of the top CISOs in the industry, uh, Amy Cardwell from United Healthcare. Uh, Eric Decker from Intermountain, uh, as well as Jim Brady uh, from M Fairview Health, and and what was fun is we worked as a team, the Metagram team, um, to and and the mobile medicine team, the book team, to really demystify some of the challenging issues that they asked us to to cover in the panel. So they they asked us to cover two big subjects that impact cybersecurity, particularly for mobility. So one um, is software build materials. Uh, which is conceptually like a nutrition label for software of all the components and all the dependencies. And, and the only thing to really know about this um, is that for once, uh, keep your eye on it because healthcare is going to be first. Uh, usually people think of finance or, or other sectors as going first uh, with technology, uh, in particular with security, uh, but we're really going to see a big push in healthcare. So it's been there um, in government, defense, and aerospace uh, for some time. So, you know, it's referred to as SBOM, uh, it's really targeted for medical devices and the related software ecosystems. And, and the goal is to reduce challenges with things like patch management and visibility into vulnerabilities. So I, I think the the second topic that this audience is probably most excited about is info blocking and making information available uh, by health systems to release patients, you know, their data. So the challenge with that is API security. So application programmable interfaces um, is how data gets shared. So the SALT security had a state of API security report, and they are saying that malicious traffic uh, has increased by 681%. Uh, did, did you know that? Or have you, have you heard that? So that's yeah. huge, right? And that's really scary uh, you know, for healthcare executives. 
So what, what healthcare executives need to do is balance that fear uh, with what regulators really want in terms of releasing that data, uh, as well as you know, some of the penalties that are coming along. Like, did you know that some health systems are getting like a million dollar penalties for blocking information? I did not know that. Yeah. The challenge though is that there's a lot of complexity and nuance for implementation. So I think you can think of like two, two, two sides that people could be on. One is they just want to let the data be free. <laughs> be, you know, quality of requester, privacy, security, who cares? Right. So that's that's one side of, of, of a view. A different point of view is, whoa, <laughs> we can't just let anyone connect to our mission critical systems and EHR, that's nuts. So these are these two totally different perspectives people are bringing uh, to the issue. Um, so what we wanted to share you know, with the audience is that, first of all, they have to release the data, it's the law. Uh, and so we want them to focus on you know, problem solving regardless of, of, of how it affected their business or, or how they felt about the safety of it, right? So what we advise them is we advise the health systems really to peg the evolution of their program for info blocking um, to both their current and their future business model. So what do I mean by that? So let's take like one hypothetical sort of real example of an approach to solving for it. You have a wealthy academic center. Um, they have a nationally leading informatics center of data distinction. And th this would mean that they really are pushing towards nation leading goals of research, teaching, clinical care, and, and they really have results to show for it, right? They've, they've got dozens of investigators. So they have a roadmap really to fully manage patient requests uh, through a software as a service product solution management paradigm, right? So they, they have a lot of capabilities like an advanced tech company, right? Um, so building those capabilities for managing software applications and development lifecycle risks is really what allows health systems to, to really get comfortable with releasing this data, right? They also have to have policies, right? So they need to have lawyers that review those policies. And so this is gonna be the, the model of the institution I described who's really forward leaning, who has a lot of res resources are gonna be the ones that are like most ready right now to implement, right? And so by contrast, you want to think of a different kind of system. We'll call them a laggard system. <laughs> and, and they're in a region that's stuck in a fee-for-service model, uh, which means they get paid for everything they do as opposed to getting paid you know, for quality or value. And, and they'll grudgingly you know, be advised to release their API, but with a disclaimer to the patient to say that, you know, something to the effect of you are exiting the system. We've all seen those kinds of just disclaimers, right? When we're exiting one application to another and they need, they need to, to take comfort that they're not really responsible uh, for the quality of that requesting app, right? Um, for, for the patient. Um, so in that scenario, you wouldn't really see the capabilities for managing um, software application lifecycle risks. And so they're really gonna start with really what you would consider a more minimum viable product. D did that make sense? Yes, yes. Um, and I just wanted to note that we have two minutes left. So oh, wow. <laughs> I know that went fast. So if, if we could potentially wrap up by talking about some of the other panels that you saw and some of the other interesting takeaways from the event as a whole, that would be wonderful. Yeah, so I encourage you to go to the website. You can still go to the website, Vive, uh, the event, and, and check out the agenda. Uh, as well as the tracks and the themes. And so I, I highly recommend that if you wanna get a flavor for the event. I think um, the, the best thing for this audience to understand about it that I took away from it is I loved the focus on the details that they, we had a lot of very technically uh, brilliant, um, committed, you know, seasoned people provide a lot of real uh, feedback based on a lot of really hard work that they've been doing. And it just felt so useful and so practical. And that's the biggest takeaway. So really my hat's off to Chime, who is the College of Health Information Management Executives, who is the leadership um, organization, the CIO's organization. They really drove the content and did a fantastic job, I thought. And then they really let health, you know, do the marketing and the logistics and, and the design and, of the event. And, and that was super fun too. So they really did a great job of combining like substance with fun. And that was kind of my takeaway from, from Vive. 
Amazing. Um, so I guess before we sign off, I just wanted to give a quick plug for Sherry. She'll be back at Hit Lab next month at talking about her book, and I'll definitely be tuning into that. And thank you, Sherry, for being here and for this really interesting conversation and insights. And please, anyone in the audience, if you want to connect with Sherry, uh, put your LinkedIn's in the chat.